Welcome back. You're listening to The Voice of Russia. I'm Juliet Spare. Today's discussion topic is tobacco. It's already been banned from displays in shops in England, and now the government's health secretary, Andrew Lansley, is considering new legislation to stop all branding on cigarette packets. The consultation is underway to find out if plain packaging would make smoking less appealing to people under 16. A survey suggests 5% of children aged between 5 and 15 already smoke regularly, but would a ban on branded boxes make smoking less desirable and discourage young people from starting? Joining me in the Voice of Russia London studios to discuss this is Amanda Sanford, Research Manager at ASH, Action on Smoking and Health, Amal Pandya from Hands Off Our Packs campaign, and Chris Snowden, author of Velvet Glove Iron Fist, A History of Anti-Smoking, and Mark Littlewood, Director General from the Institute of Economic Affairs, is down the line. So, will removing brand from cigarette packets prevent young people from smoking. Amanda Sanford. Yes, we think that uh, removing the colourful branding from cigarette packs will make a difference and will help to reduce smoking amongst young people. In, in, in the UK, since the tobacco advertising ban came into effect in 2003, in fact, smoking rates have halved amongst uh, 11 to 15-year-olds from 10% down to 5%. So that's an encouraging sign. I think there is a, uh, that's a clear reflection of the importance of the ban. But what's happened since then is that the tobacco companies have invested heavily in making the cigarette packs themselves the main marketing tool. Now that advertising is banned, the branding is focused very much on the packs. And research shows that young people find these um, very colourful, uh, attractive packs much more appealing than, a, say, a plain, brand, a plain pack if they're presented with both. And this has been done through eye-tracking research and a whole range of different measures. Um, so there, um, there is research there to show that this will, will have a, a very pos positive impact in reducing smoking. OK, I'm going to come to you, Amal Pandya, because you obviously are from a Hands Off Our Packs campaign. What's your response to this if research suggests the, that these packets are made more interesting for young people and it does have an effect on them. We need to discuss this research in more detail, but the only people who are going to be more excited about this proposal than our taxpayer-funded health lobbies will be people who counterfeit tobacco. The criminal gangs, counterfeiters, essentially the black market. Now, if the government really wants to confiscate branding from legal products, which already have high levels of competition against the black market, commoditize them, homogenize them. It makes it a lot easier for them to replicate and they will, it will boost the black market. And the, the problem with that, why I think, and a lot of people agree with me, that this will be more harmful for children is because criminal gangs don't care who they sell tobacco to. Retailers do. It's illegal for them to sell under 18, but criminal gangs obviously break the law and they sell on street corners, outside schools, and they're the ones that are going to benefit from this proposal. Already in supermarkets, you can't look at cigarettes. You have to ask for a particular brand and the shopkeeper has to pull a shutter. Mm. So if, isn't that enough? No, uh, it's, 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 not, it's, it's a step in the right direction, but it's not going to be enough because um, the, w when a smoker uh, smokes, they, bring, they pull out the pack from their, their pocket or handbag and place it on the table. The people, that smokers identify with particular brands. It's a sort of status symbol, if you like. And certainly younger people tend to go for the more heavily promoted um, premium brands because you know, they, they perceive that to be something that's really cool to smoke. So this is what we've got to, we've got to put a stop to because you know, there's nothing actually very glamorous or sophisticated about getting uh, ill from smoking. You know, smokers, half of all smokers will die prematurely and they'll die, um, before they die, they will probably have many years of ill health through from lung cancer, heart disease or other uh, problems. Um, you know, smoking isn't like other consumer products. It shouldn't be out there uh, being heavily promoted as, um, you know, something that's, that's ordinary, you know, an ordinary thing to do. We need to be moving towards a society where smoking is unusual, is, is out of the ordinary. Chris Snowden, you're an author of Velvet Glove, Iron Fist and a history of anti-smoking. Do you think that this is going to have any effect on children, on stopping them from smoking? No, I don't. I think Amanda's actually um, sort of inadvertently pointed out a couple of the major flaws in this uh, proposal. She's said that the, the evidence says that given the choice, young people will pick the, um, the branded pack over the plain pack. Well, this is self-evident, but the point of the policy is people won't have a choice. They will have the choice to buy cigarettes and they will all be in plain packaging. Uh, the research itself is, is worthless because it doesn't get to the nub of the question. The nub of the question is do people start smoking because of 
the packaging on cigarettes. And for that, there is absolutely no evidence. And we also know that the tobacco industry don't think there's any evidence for it because we have millions of documents uh, leaked onto the internet of private in industry documents. And I've read many of them, and I'm sure Ash have read many of them. And if they had some evidence that the industry <laughs> felt that this was a way of marketing towards young people, then there would be, um, I'm sure that would be regurgitated ad infinitum. Where would you like to no, come I mean, in now? I think um, Chris is being disingenuous in suggesting that marketing doesn't work, which is effectively what you're saying, because marketing and advertising clearly does work. That's why companies uh, spend huge numbers, a you know, huge amount of money on it. And, and cigarettes are no different in that respect. So, um, you know, the, the fact is that advertising marketing does work. But this it does help to recruit. Marketing. This no, is the problem. But, but it is. All, it's all advertising, as you know, was banned in 1999, and Ash celebrated, saying that no, they had a total and comprehensive ban. And they were delighted that there was no, no, never again would there be uh, tobacco advertising. But, but, it, but you know, at full well, Chris, that it has, it can, so marketing does continue, and the the, the packs are no, it themselves. doesn't. It doesn't because it does, I don't because accept your your idea well, you that, may not, that a pack is advertising. Well, it's not. If if a pack it, constituted advertising, it would already be illegal because the 1999 Act banned it all. If you believe it's, it's advertising, promotion. take them to court. But take them to court. But the research does show that children are much more likely to smoke premium brands, and premium brands are those that are most heavily promoted. Okay, I yeah, think can we, can, we talk about, can we talk about the research quickly? I mean, um, before this consultation was announced, was leaked on Friday. Um, the University of Stirling was hired by the Department of Health to basically do a systematic review of all the evidence that's out there on whether plain packaging would work and stop kids from smoking. Unfortunately, I feel sorry for all of us who had to read through that document. It was fairly long. But the most important part were the limitations on that. And they openly admitted that this has never been tried anywhere in the world, so they cannot really know whether this is going to work. And secondly, most importantly, and I'll, I'll read out what it says, it said that studies that have been conducted in this research are based on hypothetical scenarios, not truly able to test how individuals would react or behave if plain packaging was to be introduced. Now, why that's important is for two reasons. Firstly, the research, which is conducted by people who know the answer they want anyway, asks someone, what would you do in this situation? So you're asking someone to rewind a few years and find out what they do, whether they figure out. But more importantly, there's a double hypothetical, because it's asking the person to then rewind and become a teenager again. What would you do when you're 16 and were faced with this problem? That's, that, there's too many leaps of faith to be taken there to have this evidence as being regarded in any way as conclusive. That is why we need to stress here that the government has promised us an evidence-based pol policy on drug use. And this, there is no evidence for this. We're, they've just passed in Australia. Let us wait and see what happens in Australia. And I think that's the key thing, the most sensible thing that the government can do right now in the UK. Is this too little too late, though, if we wait for Australia to see what happens there and the research is, albeit hypothetical, what, what needs to be done to stop young children from taking up the habit? Is, is removing branding enough? Well, I think the point is that, um, certainly in the UK, the government has adopted quite a number of strong measures to help reduce smoking amongst both adults and young people um, and that's that's fine but obviously we, it's not sufficient we need to do more um, and I think it is right that the government is consulting on this issue they will be looking at uh, the evidence you know, in this country and elsewhere obviously you know we accept that that the plain packs haven't been introduced so you, obviously you can't say that this it will definitely have this impact but I think the the argument still holds that it is um, still a form of marketing and that um, it, Therefore, it, it, it's logical. It's a logical extension of the tobacco advertising ban that we have already. Now, we do have another guest down the line. It's Mark Littlewood, the Director General from the Institute of Economic Affairs. Hello, Mark. Hello, there. Mark, I'd like you to tell us now what you would tell Andrew Lansley. Uh, I think that this is a, a, a ludicrous uh, idea and concept, and I think that there are actually simpler, much more straightforward things you can do to make sure that tobacco is treated as an adult product, which it clearly should be. Uh, I mean, for example, as I understand it at the moment, there is no law against me going into a newsagent's, buying a uh, 100 cigarettes, walking outside and just passing them on to 14 or 15 year old children. That would not be a breach of the law. I couldn't charge for them, but I could procure them for them. So it seems to me that there are some simple enforcement steps that we can actually take to prevent uh, youngsters being able to legally purchase tobacco from newsagents and supermarkets without having to completely strip the branding from packets. And what I'm particularly worried about is the precedent and principle that such a move would set. I mean, if we are going to do this for cigarettes, 
Is it also true that some of the way that alcohol products are packaged are more attractive to children than if they were in a plain bottle with a rat poison signature on it? Is it also true that, I don't know, candy bars in nice uh, glossy wrapping are more attractive to children? We can't move to a monochrome world based on the uh, view that people looking at two different types of packs understandably say, given a choice, I would prefer the one that looks nicer. So I think there are some simple steps that need to be taken without this enormous leap in the dark uh, that can actually cut down on youngsters smoking. And for adults, um, I would say, it is perfectly reasonable for an adult who has chosen to smoke to allow them to have their cigarettes in a nice-looking packet. I don't consider that to be an affront to civilization whatsoever. So let's make sure that these products don't get into the hands of kids, but let's leave adults alone, all of whom, every last person, uh, certainly in the United Kingdom and pretty much on the planet, is aware that cigarettes contain serious health risks if you choose to smoke them. That battle has been won. Now allow people to make their own adult choice. I'd like to just mention that we have an imbalance in our discussion. Amanda is the only person who is for the branding retreat on cigarette packets so I'd just like to come to you again Amanda okay well if I could just uh, pick up on some of the points that Mark made there I mean obviously we do support other tobacco control measures and Mark mentioned about uh, possibly uh, banning proxy purchasing you know where adults buy on behalf of children that is already in place in Scotland uh, I think it work, it's working quite well so yes we wouldn't have any objection to that as, as a measure licensing retailers I think is another important me measure to help uh, control tobacco use so that would be helpful but as to his idea of the sort of the domino theory that you know where is this going to go next will uh, alcohol um, branding be removed and so on we had all this argument with the advertising ban and there's no uh, be no evidence of this whatsoever. Tobacco is unique. It's uniquely dangerous. Um, alcohol can cause harm if it's used, abused or uh, used in excess and so the same with sort of fatty foods and so on. But tobacco is unique and it needs to be uh, treated uniquely and um, because it is so dangerous. Chris Snowden. Well, it's a shame this is radio because I just saw Amanda's nose grow about three inches. I mean, this idea that it's, it's not a slippery slope is, is ludicrous. We have right now sitting in Parliament today a common select committee that are looking into the government's alcohol strategy and on the agenda written in black and white is plain packaging for alcohol going back to the tobacco uh, the complete uh, advertising ban for tobacco the British Medical Association and many other groups are now campaigning for exactly the same thing with alcohol it's clearly following a tobacco blueprint and this personally is what I find most dangerous about plain packaging I'm absolutely convinced that if this happens with cigarettes then within weeks or months you'll be having people calling for it to be applied to alcohol and junk food which is exactly in fact what happened in Australia um, <laughs> to say it's a myth is crazy. Yeah. Well, they may, be call, they may be calling for it, but it doesn't necessarily mean it will happen. Because oh, I think everything it has happen. to be reviewed on its merits. There's a very strong case it, for tobacco. They're using there exactly... Not be they're using exactly the well, that, that, that's quite possible, Amanda, I agree. Mm. But the British Medical Association and all these very powerful groups are following the same lobbying tactics as used by yourselves, which have proven to be very effective. And what they have on their side more than anything else is the matter of principle. Once you agree to the principle that the government should confiscate wholesale the packaging of a product and turn it, turn it into public propaganda because that product has a risk then the degree of risk is irrelevant. There are many many people who die from alcohol abuse and, and all sorts of things. There is no principled reason to object to putting alcohol in plain packaging and not cigarettes. Okay, Amal Panja, hands off our packets. Come on, tell, tell me why. Why what? Well, why should people be allowed to choose for themselves when the evidence is there that smoking does cause heart disease, lung disease, cancer, sure. and you have campaigners from ASH who agree with this decision. You know, where do you sit morally to sort of say, no, come on, hands off our packets? Well, morally, essentially, we are a mature democracy and a free society, and we therefore try and treat people as adults and tell them that their lifestyle choices are for them to try and sort out for themselves and their families and their communities. We do not want the government coming in and telling people how to live their lives because it has the opposite effect. And this is, the, this is one of the key points with kids. With this, the, this argument has been drawn around with kids. Why do children smoke? It cannot, no, no sensible person could possibly think that kids smoke because they see a shiny colour or a pattern. They do it because it's naughty. They do it because they're rebelling. They're doing it because they're sticking two fingers up against their parents or society or government, everyone telling them this is bad for them. Now this plain packaging hysteria 
will do exactly that. It will make it more rebellious. It will be, therefore, I think it's immoral in itself. And I think it's immoral for the government to be trying to control people's lifestyles. We need to be responsible for ourselves. I do not want to see any... I want to see a reversal, and this is what we were promised with the coalition, actually, in all this interference, nanny state nonsense in all parts of our lives. Please just let us deal with our own mistakes. Can I just come in there? Um, just to address this issue of, of adult choice and so on, um, bear in mind that, uh, at least in the UK, uh, around two-thirds of children start smoking before the age of 18. So I <clears throat> would question whether they're in a... Until very recently, it was legal at 16. So that's not a... Well, that's not a okay. surprising well, statistic. Well, around, around the fact a, that yes, but a third start before the age of 16. people starting are young, and yes. that's, um, it was until very recently, I think last year, it was legal to do it until after the age of 16. Well, that it, is not a statistic that proves Okay, well, it, it's around a third start before the age of 16, but certainly while they're still at school. But the, the point is about... Um, uh, sorry, I've lost my thread now. Well, what, what evidence have you got that it will get worse with plain packaging? Well... I'll have, to, I'll have to defer and be open, as open and honest as I wish the opposition would be that we have to make a value judgment. And I'll open put my hands up and say I don't have evidence because you cannot, cannot calculate this. But you can make a good sense judgment about what's happened in the past and how people behave and how kids behave. And they like most kids. I was at school, I'd put my hands up and say most recently to everyone else in this panel. And I'm going to maybe unfairly say that actually kids smoke because they're rebelling and they will want to rebel more. No, the, the main factor, the main reason children take up smoking is because their, their parents smoke or their older siblings smoke. It's that, that's the, the, the primary factor. So it's but not there are, shiny But there are packet. other, clearly, other factors which have a part to play and the marketing and promotion of tobacco is clearly uh, an important factor in encouraging young people to smoke. Mark, little word then. What's next if we did see a ban on packaging? How would you see this develop? Again, that's my worry. We've already mentioned whether intellectually there's, a, there's an automatic leap onto alcohol or um, fast food or other products. I think that the, the problem I have with the continual campaign to restrict tobacco more and more and more is it's endless. I mean, you know, it seems barely a week goes by without some other tobacco control measure being proposed. It's only in the last few days that the um, ban on displaying tobacco products in, in large retail outlets has come in. Uh, it wasn't so many weeks ago that there was a suggestion that we should ban all smoking in private cars. Um, although Amanda didn't say it, there's a sort of implication perhaps there that if you've got kids, should you be allowed to smoke in your own home? It is just relentless. And, and I think that the problem is, is this, that, that um, those um, like Amanda, or indeed like all of us, who are, are conscious of the risks associated with tobacco smoking, but those who want more and more control, need to sort of spell out when is this battle over? Let's suppose we got to a situation in which, um, I don't know, 15% of all adults chose to smoke cigarettes and 2 or 3% of youngsters under the, under the age of 18 were, were smoking. Would that be acceptable? Would we actually say, OK, well, you know, some people are making daft decisions here um, from their own health point of view, but it's their own personal choice. Or would there still be yet another raft of, of proposals and ideas and pieces of law to cut this number even further? The number of people smoking uh, tobacco has dropped continually, if you like, over the last 60 years or so, especially as the knowledge about health risks of smoking have become greater. But I think there comes a point where you just say, well, the number of people choosing to smoke at the moment, particularly though, you know, adults, that's just sort of up to them. And we're not going to try and design a society in which we have got the number of people who smoke tobacco down to 0%. We're going to assume that the 20 or 25% who assume to smoke are making their own decision. They're contributing a, a vast amount of taxation uh, when they buy cigarettes, uh, which dwarfs the amount that is spent on the National Health Service for treating any smoking-related diseases. OK, thanks, what Mark. Like is, when is this over? Well, I just want to ask now you, Chris, is this an economy or a health issue? And how political is it? How political is it? Well, it's, insofar as it's a prohibitionist enterprise, it's very political because they can't get to their end goal without endless laws. And Mark's quite right, there is an annual campaign now. And um, people like Amanda turn up saying, we've got overwhelming evidence for this and that. And yeah, I mean, I noticed that a lot of journalists seem to be getting a bit jaded with it recently. I'm, I'm not surprised. But the, the end goal is prohibition. It always has been for, for, for many, many years now. And I read an article recently written in uh, the journal Tobacco Control, 
in which they discussed would it be acceptable if 0.5% of the population smoked or would that still be too much because too many people would be, would be dying from smoking related <coughs> diseases. That's the end game. That's what they need to do. And all this stuff about children really is so much hot air. You know, it's very easy to say think of the children but when people say that they're almost always looking at um, restricting the liberties of grown adults. It's nothing to do with children. It's not really anything to do with health. Plain packaging by the anti-smoking movement's own admission won't do anything about existing smokers. It might speculatively affect you know, people who are born yesterday in 20 years time if tobacco is still legal which they hope it won't be well i think chris has nailed his colors to the mask very clearly there and obviously exposing his link clear links with the tobacco industry uh, to, to come out with such a heartless statement is quite staggering what, of, co of course statement? about the the, the you know wh whether it's, a, it's an economic issue and not a health issue of course it's a health issue you know we still have a hundred thousand people dying every year of smoking related disease in this country about three hundred thousand children taking it up we have to do more to stop it unless people like you really want Want, uh, people to carry on uh, so taking up an addiction. We, we have, have to stop smoking. To, the, we, were, we, were, we were working towards a, a tobacco-free society. Yes, we yes, endorse so. what Andrew Lansley, our health, health secretary, is looking for because it is just uh, totally unacceptable that in the 21st century we have thousands and thousands of people who are needlessly taking up a habit it, which it is kill none them. of your business. Of course it's, it's our You business. are a busybody of the most <laughs> classic variety. We, we are here to help people who want to quit smoking. I don't want your help. I smoke. You, I don't want well, your okay, help. That's fine. You carry on. You kill yourself. That's, that's fine by you, but a lot of two well, thirds. Of, no, because two thirds of smokers actually do want to quit. They do. They are looking no, for help to quit, no, and most smokers are regret ever taking it up in the first I place. I tell you, the flip side of this is actually people like me who don't smoke actually are encouraged to because constantly they're being told by every angle through government oh, and through taxpayer-funded health lobbies rubbish. to tell us what, how to live our lives and what to do. Well, if you're not adult enough to make your own decision, that's the oh, but, oh thank you very much. I'm glad you can see that, and so leave us alone. Amanda raises there that yeah, she's right. A, a lot of people smoke and, and, and want help and support in, in giving up. And it seems to me that that's a legitimate health requirement. You know, go to your doctor and say, uh, I need some help in giving up smoking. What would you survive? What would you suggest? And what, what could I go on to? And there's a whole range of nicotine replacement products and, and all sorts of different pieces of help that can be given. But what troubles me is that Amanda seems to have a problem that in a modern and free society, people such as Chris and myself can make the decision that we want to smoke tobacco. I smoke about 20 cigarettes a day. Uh, I don't wish to give up cigarettes. I'm conscious of the health risks. Uh, I pay substantial tax on the, the tobacco I smoke. For Amanda, that seems to be unacceptable no, that I'm choosing to do it's, that. It's, it's not, um, No, I quite, I quite accept your point of view. You're perfectly entitled to do that. But I'm just repeating the fact that the vast majority of smokers uh, recognise that they're addicted, they do want help in quitting, and it's part of our role to help them to, to quit. You don't but also to prevent, you to don't prevent children from ever starting to you, smoke. Ash have never helped people quit. They've never set up stop smoking clinics. We, you, you are, you are doing nothing to get snooze legalised and encourage people to use electronic cigarettes, things that are actually useful. You have never helped smokers give up. Do. You have been a lobbying organisation since the day you were born. Yeah, but exactly. And but that's, that's all you do. No, it, you, 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 all you do is demand prohibitionist laws, incremental uh, laws, uh, moving towards prohibition. You don't help anyone. But don't we need lobby groups such as Ash to help influence government policy? Because we have people here who obviously come from an economic background and a freedom of speech and a freedom of own thought. But we do, there is a space for lobby if groups. If they were voluntary, yes. But I mean, Ash isn't a voluntary group. There, there are no sure, voluntary anti-smoking groups because most people don't care about it. The average man in the street doesn't care about plain packaging. No one's going to get actually. up on a Sunday and go around knocking on doors saying, "Please, um, you know, lobby your MP for plain packaging." Well, Ash is a state-funded lobby group. It is state-funded no, activism, not. astroturfing by any other name. No. Um, you must defend that, Amanda. Yes. Well, actually, uh, in terms of the public support for, for plain packaging, we've already uh, found through our research that about uh, almost two-thirds of smokers, uh, as of two-thirds of adults do support it. I'm, 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 just gonna, I'm just going to bring up that poll that was commissioned very recently by Ash. Um, it, it was very disingenuous and I'm, I'm very disappointed that she's uh, brought it up because it, what it effectively did de facto was put a picture in front of someone of a baby and said do you want this baby to die in? Oh, and that's pretty much what the poll was. It's, it's a pretty much de facto. What, what, and that, what, that, and it, it did not categorically and simply say 
would you support playing pageant for that? To that the, 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 the whole, the po the whole point of the question is to, I mean, what is the point of asking a person, uh, uh, person's view on plain packaging if, they, if you can't actually show them what it's going to be like? So what we did was we showed them a pack of what it would look like with the health, with very clearly with the health warning, because that's the whole point. A plain pack, would, the health warn graphic health warning would be the, the dominant feature on the pack, and it would take away the branding. That's the whole point of it, to make the branding, uh, make the health warning more prominent. Uh, and, uh, and just, just answer your question very quickly um, on whether you asked if this was an economic or a political or a health issue. Um, we, we do not know how effective it's going to be, but the potential downsides to our economy are going to be, you know, potentially devastating. Our retailers are already spending £16 million in, in putting in the tobacco display ban and groups like the Association of Convenience Stores have already said our, our members, our small shops cannot afford this. Another whack on us. This is not what the economy needs right now. We need some growth and we need less busybodies. You're listening to The Voice of Russia in London with me, Juliet Spear, and we're talking about the UK's government consultation on whether to remove branding from cigarette packets to discourage young smokers. Joining me in the studio is Amanda Sanford, research manager at Ash Action on Smoking and Health, Emil Pandya from Hands Off Our Packs campaign, Chris Snowden, an active blogger and author of Velvet Glove Iron Fist, and Mark Littlewood, the director general from the Institute of Economic Affairs, is down the line. I would like a message from you to Andrew Lansley and how you would like this consultation to play out and how much of an effect you think this really genuinely will have on whether children take up smoking. We uh, certainly very strongly support the consultation. We would urge people to, to read it, to respond. Uh, we think it's a very important measure uh, that will have a, impact on, a lasting impact to help drive uh, smoking out of this country and make it history. Uh, well, the public consultation will almost certainly uh, give a majority support to the policy. By the way, the consultation is rigged. If you look at the display ban consultation, which was exactly the same as this one, to all intents and purposes, the state-funded pressure groups such as ASH, the Department of Health's various front groups, which have paid millions of pounds in taxpayers' money, will just be using that money to round up uh, anybody they can, they can find using email campaigns, website campaigns and postcards. So it won't reflect public opinion one bit. Mark Littlewood down the line, what's your final thought, please? You've seen some of the arguments that have been teased out that the sensible thing to do is to actually look at how this pans out in Australia, the first country to bring it in, and to see whether many of the sort of hypotheses that people like Amanda have put forward are actually borne out. And there's all sorts of unintended potential consequences. I mean, there's a huge legal battle going on in Australia about whether actually banning, playing, uh, banning uh, branding on packaging is legal. But let's just step back for a couple of years, maybe three years, and see how it pans out. And if in three years' time in Australia there are huge public health benefits, that the black market economy and counterfeiters have been in no way assisted by the fact that they only need to replicate one pack rather than 180, that suddenly youngsters aged 14 and 15 are no longer taking up um, smoking in Australia because they're no longer seduced by the gold leaf that they can see on packets in retailers. Well, then we would have an evidence base which might support Amanda's um, policy. But if it turns out in Australia that it has zero effect, that it's been very expensive, that the government's been sued, that the black market grows, then we would know it's a policy that we would not want to replicate here. So stand back and actually wait for the real evidence to roll in. Sorry for a final word, Amal Pandya. Well, my message to Andrew Lanzi would be, look, there is a industry now which is funded by your department and therefore the taxpayers, which is designed to lobby the government to persecute minority lifestyle choices. It's got to stop. It won't stop with tobacco unless he puts an end to it now. So please do that. I'd like to end now by thanking all my guests for joining me on The Voice of Russia. Stay tuned for the headlines. Welcome back. You're listening to The Voice of Russia. I'm Juliet Spear. Today's discussion topic is tobacco. It's already been banned from displays in shops in England, and now the government's health secretary, Andrew Lansley's, considering new legislation to stop all branding on cigarette packets. The consultation's underway to find out if plain packaging would make smoking less appealing to people under 16. A survey suggests 5% of children aged between 5 and 15 
already smoke regularly, but would a ban on branded boxes make smoking less desirable and discourage young people from starting? Joining me in the Voice of Russia London studios to discuss this is Amanda Samford, research manager at ASH, Action on Smoking and Health. But when a smoker uh, smokes, they, bring, they pull out the pack from their, their pocket or handbag and place it on the table. The people, smokers identify with particular brands. It's a sort of status symbol, if you like. And certainly younger people tend to go for the more heavily promoted um, premium brands because you know, they, they perceive that to be something that's really cool to smoke. So this is what we've got to, we've got to put a stop to because you know, there's nothing actually very glamorous or sophisticated about getting uh, ill from smoking. You know, smokers, half of all smokers will die prematurely and they'll die, um, before they die, they will probably have many years of ill health through from lung cancer, heart disease or other uh, problems. Um, you know, smoking isn't like other consumer products. It shouldn't be out there uh, being heavily promoted as, um, you know, something that's... that's Especially the black market. Now, if the government really wants to confiscate branding from legal products, which already have high levels of competition against the black market, commoditize them, homogenize them. It makes it a lot easier for them to replicate and they will, it will boost the black market. And the, the problem with that, why I think, and a lot of people agree with me, that this will be more harmful for children is because criminal gangs don't care who they sell tobacco to. Retailers do. It's illegal for them to sell under 18, but criminal gangs obviously break the law and they sell on street corners, outside schools, and they're the ones that are going to benefit from this proposal. Already in supermarkets, you can't look at cigarettes. You have to ask for a particular brand and the shopkeeper has to pull a shutter. So if, isn't that enough? No, uh, it's, 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 not, it's, it's a step in the right direction, but it's not going to be enough because um, the work being is focused very much on the packs. And research shows that young people find these um, very colourful, uh, attractive packs much more appealing than, a, say, a plain, brand, a plain pack if they're presented with both. And this has been done through eye-tracking research and a whole range of different measures. Um, so there, um, there is research there to show that this will, will have a, a very pos positive impact in reducing smoking. OK, I'm going to come to you, Amal Pandya, because you obviously are from a Hands Off Our Packs campaign. What's your response to this if research suggests the, that these packets are made more interesting for young people and it does have an effect on them? We need to discuss this research in more detail. But the only people who are going to be more excited about this proposal than our taxpayer-funded health lobbies will be people who counterfeit tobacco. The criminal gangs, counterfeiters... Amal Pandya from Hands Off Our Packs campaign and Chris Snowden, author of Velvet Glove, Iron Fist, A History of Anti-Smoking and Mark Littlewood, Director General from the Institute of Economic Affairs is down the line. So, will removing branding from cigarette packets prevent young people from smoking? Amanda Sanford. Yes, we think that uh, removing the colourful branding from cigarette packs will make a difference and will help to reduce smoking amongst young people. In, in, in the UK, since the tobacco advertising ban came into effect in 2003, in fact, smoking rates have halved amongst uh, 11 to 15 year olds from 10% down to 5%. So that's an encouraging sign. I think there is a, uh, that's a clear reflection of the importance of the ban. But what's happened since then is that the tobacco companies have invested heavily in making the cigarette packs themselves the main marketing tool. Now that advertising is banned, the brand 